Hello, I'm Wayne Partridge, a old Christian businessman. I became a Christian November 4th, 1971, an event that changed my life. I have a passion for anyone who is not a believer, not a Christian, not saved or born again, however you want to say it, and their destiny as of right now is hell. So I have a script here that I made from the Holy Bible. This is the truth, right? And I'm gonna wear glasses, I'm not a good reader, but I'm compelled to bring God's word <clears throat> to you, excuse me. So bear with me, it's not about me, it's about God's word. I'm going to start off with a Old Testament passage that Jesus Christ was teaching. And it has some Old Testament words that I will explain on the way through. I'm going to wear my glasses. All right. By the way, hell is a place where sinners that are unsaved, that are unbelieving, go. Sinners that die in their sin go to hell. All of them. Okay. There was, this is Luke 16, starting in verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed from the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, the word is tormented, or torments, plural. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Abraham there is an Old Testament word for God. So, <clears throat> and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham, that is God, said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all, beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that us in heaven cannot go to you in hell and vice versa. You are in hell, you cannot come to heaven. And when God says there is a great gulf fixed, he means a great gulf. Now, few things. First of all, when he died, instantly he woke up, he opened his eyes, he lift up his eyes, being in many torments. And he cried to God for a drop of water from Lazarus' finger on his tongue because he is tormented in the flame. And God said, 
son, remember. Remember that word. Remember that in your lifetime, you had no time for God or for living a Christian life. You fared sumptuously every day. You had no time for Christianity or for believing or for living a Christian life. Had no time for that. Lazarus was a Christian. He was a believer. He was a belie he believed that the that the Messiah was coming, and he went through what it took to become a believer, and you did not. So that's why there is a gulf fixed between heaven and hell, <clears throat> and you cannot be satisfied by a drop of water. Okay, now I want to explain there's four things that's going to happen right away. One is the rapture. While people are burning in hell, life on earth goes on. God with the rapture is called, he calls up all the Christians, all the born again people to heaven. They're gone. And then seven years of tribulation comes to the earth. Seven years. Three and a half good with the Antichrist making things good. Three and a half like a hell on earth. Awful. Many, many people die. There's some men that beg for the mountains to fall on them, to kill them, but God takes death away from them. But still other millions die and go to hell. After the, the uh, great tribulation is the millennium. God comes from heaven down with me, all the saints in glory, and rules the earth for a thousand years, called the millennium. After the thousand years are up, then God says it's time for the end of the world, which would be the end or the final judgment. And it's in Revelation 20. I've got to get the right page. And for you that thought that hell was the end of it, it's just the beginning. It's worse. It gets worse. I saw, this is Revelation 20, starting with verse 11. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This judgment is going to be someplace different than on earth or in heaven, because it is so horrible that they fled away from the great white throne judgment. I saw the dead, that's the unsaved, the unbelievers, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life, and the dead, that's the unsaved, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. These books that were opened, I, it's not in the Bible, but I call them 
the books of sin because the books were opened and the sinners were judged out of those books. All right. Every man or woman that had ever been born, that has ever been born from the day of creation, from the day that Adam was, well, God created Adam and then Eve. From then on, anyone that died like the rich man, an unbeliever, will be standing naked before God. That is Jesus Christ on that great, pure, a pure white throne. White means purity. Okay, small and great. That means kings, presidents, royalty, rich people. They will live. They will be at this judgment. Small and great. They'll be poor people, kind of like me. Poor people will be there. People that are just common. Every walks of life are there before the great white throne judgment. And the books were opened and they were read and they were judged according to their works. And then the sea and death and hell delivers up all those that are in there for this judgment. And let's, let's go ahead and read it again. The books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life. Okay, Whenever a person is born again or believes or is saved, becomes a Christian, their name is written in the book of life. All right. My name, my wife's name, my children's name, and their children's names are written in that book. Because God was merciful to me, a sinner, and I was saved. An event back in 71 that changed my life. My wife and I were saved together. And... Our names are in that book. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. I am a Christian. I am born again. I'm a believer. I'm going to die the physical death. The physical death. I will not die the spiritual death. I've been saved. And I will not die the spiritual death. But, if you die in your sin, you will not only die the physical death, but you will die the spiritual death. That is the second death. All right. That's those two judgments. Now, we're going to read other verses here about sin. There's not a lot of them, but they're important ones. And I want you to understand these two. You answered my ad on YouTube to learn about God's hell. What God says about hell. That's what I'm giving you. Mark 9:43 And if thy hand offend thee cut it off 
It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands and two, uh, two hands and go to hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. There, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. It's a little repetition, but we're going to go on. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. <coughs> it is better for thee to enter holt into life than having two feet and be cast into hell where the fire never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye, this is the last one of these, offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Talk a minute about the worm dieth not. It's a gnawing. The rich man was reminded that he's going to remember. God said, son, remember? Okay. The worm that dieth not is a gnawing that never stops. I could have been saved. I could have been saved. Why didn't I listen? Why didn't I understand forever and ever? There is no coming out. It's forever. Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9 In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. When it's talking about the gospel there there's four verses in the New Testament that tells how Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, how he was buried, and how he rose again and had victory over death. That's the gospel. He died for our sins. And here it's talking about taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 21 8. But the fearful and unbelieving, get a hold of that word. This is Revelation 21 verse 8. Unbelieving. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, you are unbelieving. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable homosexuals and murderers and homo, uh, well, ho, uh, whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There, we got that second death in there again. Now, one more verse from the New Testament and two from the Old Testament. And we're done with that. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that's God. Isaiah 5, 14 in the Old Testament. Therefore, Hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, 
and their glory and their multitude and their pomp shall descend into it. Talking about unbelievers, people that die in their sin. There's so many that hell had to enlarge itself. And the last one is in Psalms, the book of Psalms. It says, the wicked, that is the unsaved, shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That's the sum of it right there. Now, that's just a few, just a few verses. There is a lot more. But I would think that that would be enough for you to understand what hell's going to be like. And just think, you will never die. You will never, never die. You're going to live forever. You were born into a body. At that moment, you became a soul also. A soul living in a body that is decaying, that is dying. It will die in disease. It will die in an accident. You never know when. Or maybe just old age. But that body is going to perish. It's going to die. You will separate from that body. And you will be a living soul that lives forever. The moment, like the rich man, when he was buried, he lifted up his eyes being in hell. That's what will happen with you. The moment that you die and your soul leaves that body, you're going to go to one of two places, heaven or hell. Like a, oh, didn't snap. But like a twinkling, twinkling of an eye is what the Bible says. And you will be in hell and end up in the lake of fire. And when those people are before Jesus Christ in that judgment, the great white throne judgment, the judge is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for them, who shed his blood, who was spit on, buffeted, whipped, and crucified on a cross and suffered for their sin and they rejected it so I have a remedy here it's that is so awful I'm sorry I can't hardly even understand in my mind what it's going to be like to see the faces of billions of people standing before the very God who died for them and shed his blood who was sinless he knew no sin and he died for their sin their sin let's look at 1 Timothy 2.4 I don't need my glasses for this one. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? That is what God wants for you. Here's where sin came from. Romans 5.12 Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Adam disobeyed God and plunged the entire human race into hell. We are born sinners. And God found a way. God had a plan. And that plan is coming up. I'm going to show it to you. Romans 5 8 but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us did you get that while we were yet sinners the Son of God 
who died on the cross for our sins and rose again and had victory over death that's why he did that that's why he died was for us okay I'm getting ahead of myself here Romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord this verse here is kind of the key the the wax that holds it all together John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we're going to just look at this verse. Excuse me. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten Son. Begotten means one of a kind. Unique. That's Jesus Christ. There's only one Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. If you will believe in Jesus Christ that he died for your sin and be truthful, truthful about it, you can be saved and not perish that is going into the flames of hell and ending up in the lake of fire like those people in Revelation 20 read it again for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son, that means he that believes in Jesus Christ and believes in Him and is saved, hath life, everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I've got two verses left. This one here explains who helps you along in your sin and in your unbelief of Jesus Christ. Revelation 20.10 And the devil that deceived them them is you if you're not saved. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then the last verse that I'm going to say is the verse after John 3.16 For God so loved the world. Okay. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him shall be saved. So, remember, it really, it tears me up when I think about people lifting up their eyes being in hell. I, oh, I've said it this way before, and this is happening all over the country every day. <clears throat> Go down this one block that usually has older people in it, and there's a widow lives in a house, and her son and grandson mowed the yard because she's going to have some of her friends from a, a club they're in over and they're going to have lunch together so she's been cleaning the house and they've been cleaning the yard and the bushes and everything and everything's just spotless and when you go in the house it's immaculate everything is in the right place it's all dusted 
you walk into the kitchen and there's four pies in the window. The window is up and those pies are cooling in the window and there's, there's four placemats and dishes on the table. And the sweet old lady is out on the porch in the cool of the day and she is rocking and reading the paper. And she's got her glasses on and she's rocking and reading the paper and all of a sudden her glasses fall, the paper falls and she slumps in the chair and in hell she lifts up her eyes. I gotta get a hold of myself and that's that is happening all over this world not only in the United States but other countries too that don't that that aren't believers and that rips my heart out I'm gonna pray with you right now as soon as I can gather myself and I'm going to ask God to save your soul. So, pray with me, all right? If you want to be saved, now's the time to do it. You don't have to close your eyes, but if you want to, that's fine. Just follow me. Father in heaven, for, forgive me for my sin. I believe that Jesus, through faith, died for my sin. Forgive me, Father, for my sin. Come into my life, come into my heart, and save my soul. Make me a new person. And I love you. And I thank you for saving my soul. Help me to change to a better person. Help me to know that I'm saved. I'm trusting in Jesus Christ as my Savior because He died in my place for my sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Forgive me for crying. It's real. And hell is a, is a real place. The lake of fire is a real place. Real place. And you're going to live in one of the other. Heaven or hell for eternity. And eternity is an ending. It's never ending. And eternity has your memory and the worm that dieth not. It's an awful. I can't, words don't even describe what it's going to be like. And I pray that you did mean business with God and you did get saved. And I'm going to leave you now. And I hope if you're a little confused, just watch this again. I meant for it to be clear. And I didn't mean to be emotional, but remember, I'm a real old man, and I have a passion for you just like God does. Good day.